Hi, I'm Dr. Boaz Ben David, your host in Cognitive Psychology. For students all over the world, signal detection theory is a scary movie. Here at IDC, we give you a hand. We provide you with the tools to beat the fear. The story of Shira. Meet Shira, a student at IDC. Shira has no way to experience reality directly, but through her senses. She cannot know ahead of time if her phone rang or not. This limitation forces her to make a decision based on the information she receives from her senses. Shira has a phone. It rings like this. Shira listens to music. Using speakers, it sounds like this. I hold my head erect. Sometimes the noise of the music is soft and it is easy to detect the ringtone. Other times the notes of the music are so loud that it is difficult to differentiate. It is hard to know whether the source of the notes comes from the music or from the ringtone masked by the music. A story could have four different endings. When the phone actually rings, we can have a hit, a positive response when there is a signal. In other words, Shira picks up the phone when it actually rings. Or a miss, a negative response even though there is a signal. In other words, Shira misses to pick up the phone even though it actually rings. When the phone doesn't ring, we can have a false alarm, a positive response when there is no signal. In other words, Shira picks up the phone, but it doesn't ring. Or a correct rejection, a negative response when there is no signal. In other words, Shira does not pick up the phone and it doesn't ring. Let's summarize the four conditions. When the phone actually rings, we can have a hit or a miss. When the phone does not ring, we can have a false alarm or a correct rejection. And now, a story. It was a cold day. Suddenly the phone rang, but Shira didn't hear it. What happened? Let's think. Let's say that the ringtone and the music are very similar. We can call it D prime. Another option is that the listener really does not want to hear the ringtone. Shira, I've been calling you all day. What? I haven't noticed. Story number two. It was a warm night. The phone didn't ring, and yet Shira jumped and a false alarm. She thought the phone was ringing. Sounds like my ringtone. Later, we'll call this D prime. Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head. I can't wait for it to ring already. Later, we'll analyze this as beta. Okay, let's stop and figure out what are these beta and D prime. Shira, can you please tell me why do you make all these mistakes? Because the music is so similar to my ringtone, it is difficult to distinguish between them. And you know, I listen to loud music. That's right, Shira. And we call that D prime, perceptual sensitivity. How much is the signal different from the noise? In our case, signal, the ringtone, noise, the music. Whenever 
I feel afraid. I hold my head. As the deep rhyme gets larger, the signal is more distinct than the noise. As the deep rhyme gets larger, we have more correct responses like hit and correct rejection. Let's see it in the graph. Y-axis, the chances for a neural activity. X-axis, the amount of activity. Now let's see the function. Let's start with the condition where there is only noise. Here is the neural distribution, or as we call it in Israel, the Crambo distribution. Now let's turn to the condition where we have a signal, the ringtone, and the noise, the music. Note, this function is to the right of the noise function. That is, if the neural activity is higher, it is more reasonable that we're talking about the condition where we have noise plus signal. If the neural activity is lower, it is more reasonable that we are in the noise condition. But, note carefully, there is a wide region where both functions exist. That is, there is a wide region of neural activity that could have resulted because of the noise or because of the noise plus signal condition. Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect and whistle on. When the music is really loud, it is difficult to know whether the phone was actually ringing or not. A small deep rhyme. Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect and whistle on. When the music is really soft and we use a very loud ringtone, the D prime is large and it is easy to know whether the phone was actually ringing or not. But this is not enough. There is one more thing that impacts the decision. What do you want? It's difficult to decide. Exactly, Shira. You're right. The decision criteria, beta, the extent to which the perceiver is open or closed to detect the signal. We can see the beta criterion in the center, yes to the right, no to the left. As the beta increases, the perceiver renders the criterion more severe and she is less lenient, less open to detect the signal. Thus, we will have more miss and correct rejection responses. We can note that the beta is moving to the right and thus we have more miss, more correct rejections and less responses to the right of the line. As the beta decreases, the perceiver decreases her criterion. She is less severe and more open to detect the signal. Thus, we'll have more hit and false alarm responses. The perceiver becomes more jumpy. The beta is moving to the left. We can see we have more hit, more false alarms, and less responses to the left of the line. And now for the real story, your chance to practice what we've learned today. Let's say Shira is out buying a new big huge stereo with a subwoofer and everything. Now the music will be much louder. What will happen? Well, the ringtone will be less distinct. Therefore, there will be a change in the perceptual sensitivity, the D prime will become smaller and we can reasonably assume to be less hits and we have less correct rejections. The signal is less discriminable than the noise and the two functions get closer. Story number two. Her landlord says, Shira, you can't listen to loud music between 2 to 4 p.m. What will happen? The D prime will become larger and we have more hits. 
and we have more correct rejections. The signal becomes more discriminable than the noise, and the gap between the two functions gets larger. Story number three. Shira is sitting by the phone, waiting for the phone call from Stanford to notify that she finally got accepted to the direct PhD route in cognitive psychology, of course. What will happen now? The beta will become smaller, the decision criteria will become lower, we can assume more false alarm, but more hits. She is expecting a phone call, the beta is moving to the left, we have more hit, more false alarms, and less no responses. Story number four. Shira is waiting for a phone call from work, asking her to come and fill in for somebody else. She's watching football. It's a great match. What will happen now? Her decision criteria will increase. Her beta will increase. We can reasonably assume to find more misses, but more correct rejections. She does not want to hear the sound. It reflects by beta moving to the right. We have more miss, more correct rejection, and less yes responses. And now for a challenge. In the previous two cases, the homework cases, in which one will find the change in the percentage of correct responses? And in which one will find a change in the percentage of detection responses? Think about it. See you in class. Ooh.